Three frigates walk into a range war. America's constellation shows with Aegis baseline 10 and 32 cells, running late, but built to punch. Italy's brand new Frem Evo arrives with a dual band radar built to swap theater ballistic missiles. Japan's Mogami finally gets its Mark 41s. First crisis, first hour. Who sees first, shoots first, and walks away? Radar wins the opening punch. Constellation shows up with the Spy 6 family's Enterprise Air Surveillance Radar EASR. Fixed face array tied to Baseline 10 Aegis, built to see farther through clutter and hand tracks to the fleet via Cooperative Engagement Capability, CEC. That combo isn't brochure fluff. It's the Navy's own plan for FFG-62, with Spy 6 version 3 as the primary air surface set. Italy rewires the picture. Frem Evo swaps the old rotating set for Leonardo's Kronos dual band radar. Four C band active electronically scanned array faces plus four X band faces managed as one brain. C band builds volume search and ballistic missile defense, BMD relevant discrimination. X band sharpens horizon work and fire control. The result is eight fixed panels and no mechanical blind spot. Purpose built to catch low flyers and fast arcs before they crest the deck. Japan plays it lean and lethal. Mogami's OPY-2 X-Band active electronically scanned array sits inside an integrated mast, lower signature, fast refresh, gallium nitride power, tuned for multi-mission tracking and periscope level picks. It's all ready to see on serial hulls, and the class has begun adding Mark 41 cells, meaning what OPY-2 sees, it can soon shoot. Bottom line, Constellation brings big fleet fidelity, EVO brings dual band depth with no moving parts. Mogami brings speed and stealth in the sensor loop. First to hold a firm track wins the timeline, and the magazine duel is next. Tubes are currency. Constellation walks in with 32 Mark 41 cells, plus separate deck launchers for 16 anti-ship cruise missiles, ASCOMs, and a 21-cell rolling airframe missile, RAM, mount. So even before you count quad packs, the ready-to-fight inventory is deep for a small combatant. Quad pack math tilts the table. Mark 41 can stack four Evolve Sea Sparrow Missile ESSM per cell. A max anti-air warfare AAW load turns 32 cells into 128 interceptors. Before you mix in vertical launch anti-submarine rocket VL ASROC or Tomahawk length cans later. Real loadouts blend, but the ceiling matters when salvos stretch long. Italy's Frem Avo plays the long game. Baseline fit is two 8-cell silver A50 modules up front. Aster family with reserved deck space immediately behind for more VLS. Up to two strike length A, 70 blocks under study. Midships, eight to sail. Mark II E canisters add ship killer reach. Translation, 16 cells today, growth path baked in. Japan's Megami flipped the switch this year. New hulls are launching with 16 Mark 41 cells aboard, paired with two quad launchers, eight total, for the Type 17 rolling airframe missile, two anti-ship missile, and a CRAM mount for last-ditch shots. It's a smaller VLS count, but Mark 41 means the same ESSM quad pack trick as Constellation. Bottom line, Constellation front loads volume, 32 VLS plus 16 deck-launched ASCOMs for day one mass. EVO starts at 16, but deliberately holds real estate for strike length expansion. Mogami trades fewer cells for speed to fleet and proven canister surface to surface missiles. Next up, who turns those tubes into a kill first when the fight goes acoustic? Constellation is built to hunt quiet. The US fit pairs the ANSQQ 89 version 16 combat system with the TB 37 multi function towed array and Thales combined active and passive towed array sonar, Captus 4. Variable Depth Sonar VDS, already delivered to the program ahead of schedule. That stack feeds an MH-60R with Mark 54s and buoys, giving the frigate a long, low-frequency reach and a fast airborne kill handoff. Italy's answer is a proven heavyweight. The Bergamini Line ASW architecture, the Blue Master or UMS-4110, hull-mounted sonar plus captas, four-toed VDS, carries over to the EVO baseline backed by twin hangers for SH-90 and NH-90 helos slinging MU-90 torpedoes. In a stern chase, EVO can prosecute on three axes at once, bow, tail, and rotor. Japan plays tempo and automation. Megami brings the OQQ-25 VDS 
and towed array sonar system TASS and a low signature hull that keeps its own noise floor down. With 16 Mark 41 cells now entering the class, the first wave is Type 07 VL ASRock Reach that lets an SH-60KL datum turn into a ship launch kill before the sub slips the basket. Weapons paths matter. Mogami is already loading VL ASRock. EVO fires MU-90 from tubes and helo and has historically fielded Milas from canisters. Constellation's Mark 41 provides a route to VLA if prioritized, but the Hilo and Sonar Triad is its day one hammer. Quiet Drive seals the deal. Both Constellation and Frem Evo run combined diesel, electric, and gas, Codlag, electric motors for silent hunt speeds, while Mogami's compact plant leans on automation to keep crew light and signatures tight. In a blue water dragnet, first firm track wins. In the next beat, growth margin pressure decides who can add more ears without losing speed. Weight is eating the future. AO says FFG-62 blew past the shipbuilder's June 2020 estimate by over 10%, and the Navy even told auditors it's considering lowering the speed requirement to claw back margin, an admission that performance trades are on the table. That creep isn't abstract. AO warns unplanned weight growth can limit upgrades and shorten service life, exactly the opposite of what a 30-year frigate needs. Independent reporting pegs the overage at approximately 759 metric tons, approximately 13%, underscoring how fast margin can vanish when you upscale sensors, power, and cooling. Italy took the opposite tack, designed for margin up front. Frem Evo keeps the proven Frem hull and propulsion, swaps in lighter aluminum superstructures, and adds the Kronos dual-band fixed-face suite. Crucially, the bow layout reserves real estate for more VLS, including room for two strike length A70 blocks under study. Translation, growth paths protected without gutting speed. Japan's play is tempo first, margin second. Mogami entered service lean, then began retrofitting Mark 41 VLS across the class. FFM7 commissioned with VLS installed and funding lined up for the rest. A compact, highly automated hull keeps crew at approximately 90, but the upgrade roadmap is incremental by design. Bottom line, Constellation is fighting to buy back headroom before it's delivered. Evio bakes in space, weight, and power from day one. Mogami builds fast, adds later. Next up, who actually gets holes to the pier on time? Yard Tempo decides deterrence. Constellation is three years late. The lead ship slid from a 2026 aim point to 2029 with officials blaming an unstable parent design adaptation and late design maturity. GAO's 2024 review and follow-on reporting in 2025 underscore the lag and rework still burning calendar. Italy's EVO is clocking milestones on time. Contract signed in July 2024. First steel cut April 3, 2025. Keel laid July 8, 2025 and the program is still booked for 2029 to 2030 deliveries. That's a clean public drumbeat from yard to fleet. Japan is already stacking hulls at the pier. FFM7. Nyoto commissioned May 21, 2025. The first Mogami to enter service with Mark 41 VLS fitted, followed by FFM8 Ubetsu on June 19, 2025. On July 2, 2025, MHI launched FFM11 Tatsuda, keeping a near assembly line cadence. VLS hardware flow is mapped, sets delivered in fiscal year 2024, with more scheduled in fiscal year 2025 fiscal year 2027, and fiscal year 2028. Bottom line, by calendar, Mogami is winning the numbers race now. EVO looks on track for late decade arrival, and Constellation must claw back schedule in yard before it can change the balance at sea. Next, Doctrine. Three navies, three different ways to spend those hull hours. U.S. Navy, Blue Water Escort, and ASW Picket. Constellation is written into fleet plans as a multi-mission escort that screens logistics and high-value units while adding sorely needed VLS and long-reach ASW, Captas 4 plus MH-60R. The Navy and CRS both frame the FFG as a wartime convoy escort that plugs into Aegis networks for AAW, SUW, and ASW, an economy of forced knife that frees Burke destroyers for offense. Italy, EVO as Area Defense Bodyguard with BMD Ambition. 
Frem Evio keeps heavy ASW bones but flips to a fixed face dual band radar and the Aster family, aligning doctrine toward wide area air cover for carriers and amphibious and a path to TBM defense as Aster B-1 new technology missile Aster B-1NT matures. The recent B-1NT test campaign and EVO's DBR architecture point to an Italian surface screen built to reach high and far. Japan, Mogami as fast modular workhorse. JMSDF runs Mogami as a multi-role hull that shifts between local air cover, ASW, and now mine countermeasures unmanned surface vehicle USV. Demonstrated at sea with OQQ-11 sonar, OZZ-5, UUV, and USVS. With Mark 41 finally arriving on the class, OPY-2 tracks can be turned into VLAS, ROC shots, while canister SSMs handle C control. Enough flexibility to surge numbers across the home archipelago. Bottom line, US Doctrine buys a networked escort to thicken the screen. Italy sharpens a guardian for high-end skies. Japan fields a Swiss Army frigate that multiplies hull hours. If a leak gets through, the next question is brutal. Who's close in and soft kill stack buys back seconds? If Salvo's leak, seconds decide. Constellation stacks a 57mm Mark 110, a 21-cell ram mount, and a modern EW shield, SLQ-32 version 6 C-Whip, Nolka active decoys, and SLQ-25 Nixie torpedo countermeasures. It's a layered last-ditch net built into the baseline design, not an afterthought. Italy's Frem Evo goes kinetic and clever. 276-62 Strails guns fire dart, guided rounds for missile kill shots. Backed by Lionfish 30mm remote weapon system RWS, tuned for drones. Under the skin sit OTO decoy, launching system, ODLS. 20 launchers that throw both AAW chaff IR and anti-torpedo decoys. The ship can blind seekers and spoof wakes while its guns swat stragglers. Japan's Mogami keeps it simple and fast. CRAM sits on the roofline, fed by low latency tracks, while the NOLQ3E suite bakes passive detection and electronic attack right into the mast array, plus conventional chaff decoy launchers. Fewer moving parts, more automation, tight reaction loops. Bottom line, Constellation Fields, the deepest soft kill stack on paper. EVO blends guided gun kills with robust decoys. Mogami trades volume for speed of engagement via CRAM and an integrated EW brain coming up next. Future Shock, Numbers, Exports, and who actually bends the 2030 fight. By 2030, headcounts shift the fight. Mogami will be a double-digit presence in JMSDF service, and now an Australian staple after Canberra picked an upgun Mogami for its new general-purpose frigates in a deal worth roughly $6.5 billion. First three built in Japan, the rest in Western Australia, interoperable with US weapons, crew light, and fast afield. That's holes on station across two allied navies. Frem Evo arrives late decade with two units booked, 2029 and 2030. It's fixed-face dual-band radar pairs with Aster 30 B1NT, which just cleared another test campaign as Europe ramps missile output. Translation, real area air defense teeth on day one. Constellation finally shows in 2029 a lead ship three years late, with GAO warning that design churn and weight growth forced hard performance trades. Unless the yard surges, the U.S. enters 2030 with far fewer FFGs than planned, and fewer tubes to share the burden with Burks. Net effect, quantity versus quality goes regional. Japan and Australia can mass Mogamis for sea control and ASW, while Italy fields a high-end shield. The U.S. gets a potent hunter, but later and in smaller numbers. If the Pacific crisis breaks before the U.S. backlog clears, hull availability, not brochure specs, decides who owns the first 72 hours. Who closes the gap faster? U.S. shipyards, Europe's missile lines, or a Japan-Australia production axis? Three designs, three bets on survival. Constellation hunts deep and talks in Aegis. Evo shields wide with dual band eyes. Mogami floods the map with fast holes. Different knives, same knife fight. The first 72 hours decide theaters. Sensors set the tempo. Magazines write the ending. If the opening track is acoustic, Constellation's cap does four matters. If it's a sky-thick salvo, Evo's Aster Ladder matters. If it's everywhere at once, Mogami's numbers matter. But steel isn't static. Budgets swing. Yard rhythm breaks or sings. If the U.S. buys back margin, the hunter arrives dangerous. If Italy holds schedule, EVO becomes the med shield. If Japan and Australia sprint, sea control tilts by mass. So here's the knife edge question. In a real crisis, who wins the timeline? Capability or quantity? Drop your take below. Constellation's long reach ear, EVO's high sky hand, or Megami's swarm math?
and tell me what to pit next. Type 054B versus Constellation or Arrowhead 140 versus Frem Evo.